What's up YouTube, OptoInfo, back with another weekly video. This is my double take on Double Vision. I just watched my previously made video on Double Vision and it was terrible, it was embarrassing. So this one is gonna be shorter and it's gonna make more sense. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you two things. Number one, the differential mnemonic. That's Ted forgot my cranial tumor, okay? Ted stands for thyroid eye disease, uh, forgot stands for phoria, my myasthenia, cranial, cranial nerve palsy, tumor stands for a tumor of the orbit. A tumor of the orbit, as opposed to the brain, because if you had a tumor of the brain causing double vision, that would be because it's causing a cranial nerve palsy, which is a, a separate um, a separate entity in the mnemonic. So, Ted forgot my cranial tumor. That's your differential. That's the first thing I wanna share with you. The second thing is the approach to the patient. How do you um, go about figuring out which of those is the culprit, okay? And uh, this is also something that's very simple so that you can do it very easily. Of course, there are gonna be subtle cases that this won't always work for. This is for beginners. Um, so, uh, now that you know Ted forgot my cranial tumor, um, what do you, how do you examine the patient? And right when you walk in the room, the first thing I want you to do is look at the lids. If the lids are normal, then you've ruled out three of the five, three of those five. Um, you've ruled out uh, thyroid disease, you've ruled out myasthenia, and you've ruled out a tumor of the, um, or a mass in, in their orbit, okay? So you've ruled out those three things. You only got two left. That's the nerve palsy and the phoria. Um, so the very, after you walk in, you introduce yourself. They look normal. Their eyelids look normal. You can go straight to motility testing. You can test the motility of each eye. If the motility is each, of each eye is normal, then you, you've ruled out a nerve palsy, a cranial nerve palsy. And the last thing you do is, is you check for the phoria that they have or the uh, or perhaps it's an intermittent uh, tropia um, or just Perhaps it's just a, a tropia. So um, I'm gonna go into a little bit more depth about that approach. Okay, so right when you walk in the room, if you see that there's bilateral involvement of the lids, if they're retracted, that's thyroid. If they're totic, that's myasthenia. If you have unilateral fullness, maybe some dystopia, that's the orbital mass. Feel their eyeball, see if you can feel a mass on the globe. Have them look around, you can get around to the backside, that kind of thing. I think do Valsalva. <laughs> in case it's a vascular mass, okay? Um, so you walk in the room, you introduce yourself, you notice that they look like a normal person, they're not bug-eyed, whatever, so you've ruled out those three things just like that, okay? Of course, there are subtle cases, but what? It, but I'm hitting the high points. So you've ruled out those three things, what it, what's left, you go straight to the motility, because there's two things left, there's a, a nerve palsy and, a, and, and strabismus, so. Um, we, uh, so you, you walk in, shake hands, they look normal, go to the motility, the motility test. There, I, I do each, I like to focus on each eye individually, make sure their motility is normal. If, if it's not, let's say that the right eye can't look to the right, that easy, that's a six. Um, and uh, if there's some vertical component, then I would recommend doing the three-step test. Um, I'll put a link to, a, to my, the video I did on that, it's really easy. Um, uh, but let's say it's normal. Let's say they don't have any, they don't have a sixth, they don't have a third, they don't have a fourth. Their motility is intact. That leaves one more thing, and that's the, uh, for a phoria or, inter, or um, a tropia or intermittent tropia. How do you do that? It's the cover test, the uncover test, and the cross cover test. The cover test for a tropia, the uncover test for a phoria, and the cross cover test, test for both because it's it's a combination. So if I have, so if I cover my right eye, that would test for atropia in my left eye. And you, you can imagine if it was deviated and I covered, it would pick up fixation. Um, now once my eye is covered, the input to, to my right eye is, is being ignored by my brain. For example, I don't really see a blurred image of my palm right now. It's just, it's just sort of being ignored. Like, sort of like I don't see the a, a blurry image of the back side of my eyelid. It sort of is, the, your brain does, I mean, it's also black, there's not much light there, but there's also a component where your brain just ignores the input. And so now that the, now that the eye is covered and the input's being ignored, it can be allowed to sort of drift to wherever it has a natural tendency to drift, okay? So as soon as I uncover it, you're gonna see that, you're gonna see where it drifted and it's gonna pop back into place now that it's able to to 
um, now that it's getting a good input signal, it's getting a, a clear image, it's not, the brain doesn't want to have the double vision, it's quickly going to pick up fixation, but not get a fixation. And you say, oh, you got a foria. Okay. Um, and then if you wanted to measure the, uh, um, if you wanted to measure the total deviation, both the tropia and a foria, because everyone has a little foria. Um, so if they have a tropia, they're likely going to have a, an extra component of a foria. You can do that with the cross cover test. Okay. So now let's say, say I want to test the total deviation in my right eye. So you're going to start with the eye covered. And as I cross to cover the left eye, I've done two things. I've covered the left eye. That means that's testing for atropia in my right eye, okay? And then uh, I've also uncovered my right eye, which tests for aphoria in my right eye, okay? So I've tested for both atropia and aphoria in the same eye here. So that's the cross cover test, and it will tease out more de more subtle aphorias or just the deviations in general. So Tetra got my cranial tumor, that's the differential. The approach to figure out which of those is the problem. You walk in, see if the lids are jacked up. If they're not jacked up, go right to the motility. If the motility is good, then do the, the cover, the uncover, and the cross cover to figure out the misalignment. Um, that's it. Thank you. Peace.